So let's go on to the secrets. Okay, and we are talking about the secrets of story structure, what happens where. Secret number one, I call this the fulcrum. I named it. Yay! I name most of the things that I discover in my studies of storytelling. It's fun, makes me feel like an explorer, helps me remember it, helps you remember it, what it's for. The fulcrum occurs in that, you can see that, that little wiggle right there in the very middle of your story. It's right in the middle of Act 2. We talked about this a little bit earlier, and now we're really going to examine it. Why? Why does that have to happen? So we'll try it without any fulcrum. Okay, here we come. We're zipping out of Act 1, assuming we had a, a little climax to Act 1. It got the reader going pretty fast. We're going through Act 2. We go out with a little climax on the end. This is what we wind up with. Okay, no fulcrum. What we have in our roller coaster ride is no turning point. Okay? But what if we give the reader a turning point? You see what's happened there after the fulcrum? We have gone through this wild, reckless ride. We have gone from this level of intensity to this level of intensity. We are raising the intensity of the story. We are maintaining the reader's interest by making it more fascinating. And you'll see something else about that fulcrum right there in the middle that turns a flat center into a roller coaster ride right there. It is a balancing act. If you look at the design of your story, you can see that as if it were a piece of wire, one of those little things that we used to make in the 70s with a point in the middle, and you balance it very finely, your wiggle of wire on it, it balances itself. It doesn't tip one way, it doesn't tip the other way. This delicate and essential balance of your story holds it together. It also does something even more exciting. It gets inside your reader. Be on your, you're going up before you get to that point. Your reader and your characters are looking back toward your inciting incident, your hook that freaked them out, that got them into the story, and they're grappling with it. They're trying to get away with it. They're trying to deal with that. They get to the peak of the fulcrum, and that is the point that is the climax of, in the middle of Act 2. It's not the climax of Act 2. It's the climax in the middle of Act 2 at which they must decide how are they going to go towards something rather than running away from it. And then for the rest of the story, they are facing the climax. They're running toward it. Okay, and a very fascinating thing happens when you do this to your reader, when you make them swing from one end of the pendulum to the other. You give them vertigo. And vertigo costs something I call cling. Okay? Readers must cling to the stories. It's not enough if only we writer clings to our story. Now, writers don't always realize this. They don't realize how much the reader must be involved in this, and so they don't always force their readers to cling. That's why it's a secret, because reader cling is what causes reader addiction. When you are hanging on to something of your own free will, you are getting yourself addicted to that thing. Not only that, but because we have created this swing of the pendulum from one direction to the other inside the reader, these characters they are interested in, this story that's pretty exciting, now it's just gone way in a completely different direction. And they, it's gone inside them into their gut, because that's what happens when you give somebody vertigo. It gets inside them bodily. You are reaching in past your reader's conscious, ultimately to the center of their physical body. And that's where your story has to reside. That's why we said in the description to this webinar, we are going to talk about the ultimate place that your story has to occur that is not actually on the page. And this is what you wind up with. 